Hey guys, I'm out here uh, putting some bee escapes on these hives. It's pretty hot, so if I start fumbling my words and stuff, you'll know it's because uh, I have having a heat stroke. I don't have a speech impediment or anything like that, but I kind of thought of something maybe worth discussing while I was doing this, and that's uh, the height of your hive stands. So these, uh, these hive stands that I built kind of in the beginning, they're you know two cinder blocks plus a two inch board off the ground. And in, in some cases that's nice, but in other cases it's not. So right now when I'm moving the, uh, the honey off and then putting it back on so that the bee escapes can do their job, I basically can't get those uh, honey supers back up onto the hive without the aid of a step ladder or standing up on the, on the hive stand because let's say I, this one's full of honey, which it probably is. I'm gonna actually put another box underneath here to give them some space to go down there and maybe, you know, hopefully dry out some comb and stuff if I start feeding. So I'm actually gonna be putting that honey up about this high off the ground. And, you know, like this one here, this was full of honey, every frame, all fully capped. I mean, super heavy. I mean, I barely could muscle it back up on there and trying to balance it and get it, get it right on that uh, uh, bee escape is quite difficult. So that's something to consider when you're uh when you're building your hive stands i mean look at this hive this one i've actually got a uh, honey excluder on um so i won't have to make sure the queen's not up in there or anything that's that's kind of nice but i've got to move all those boxes and put them all back on that box there was full of honey a while ago and by the time i get another box on there to give them some some space to come down out of these boxes uh that's going to be really hard to get up there i mean i'm basically climbing a ladder at that point um, this stands a little better. It's, uh, it's closer to the ground. As you can see, most of my equipment is crap. So the bees have an entrance in the front and the back, not, not by design. It's just the way it is. But, uh, uh, this is a little bit better. So, if, if, you know, if I had a super on here, you know, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be as high. Let's see what these bees are doing. Looks like they're, they're hot as well. I might just be given this stand. Most of these I'm not pulling honey from. They were little splits and whatnot. So I'm just going to uh, probably give them some space while I'm out here. But uh, let's go look at uh, this pallet over here. I've already pulled uh, honey from my uh, out yard. So I've got some boxes from that that I'm kind of putting back on to give them some space. But as you can see this, is going to be much more convenient. I've already got uh, two mediums and three deeps and it's only yay high. So by the time I add some more space, I mean, I, I'll basically kind of be able to manage it without a ladder or anything. These bees are in the shade, so they're maybe not as hot, but they're gonna have a little bit more trouble with uh, hive beetles over here than they, they will on those bees that get a, a little bit more sun. But just wanted to, uh, Kind of let everybody know what I was doing here in Oklahoma. Maybe talk about that if you're thinking about uh, building some hive stands. Maybe think about going on the lower end of the spectrum rather than the higher end of the spectrum. So the reason that you might want to put them higher, where am I going? I gotta get back here and pick up all these sticks and everything. The reason that you might want to go higher uh, is if you've got like a skunk problem or something like that. So skunks, uh, as they come up to try to scratch on the hive and get the bees, if they have to stand all the way up in the air, like eight, you know, eight, they reach it like 18 inches up, then that kind of gives the bees an opportunity to, to sting their underbelly and defend themselves a little bit better. But uh, there's a trade off to everything. So appreciate you guys uh, watching this video. I'm going to uh, get back to work. I've got these, uh, well, basically what I'm putting on these these hives is uh, every other frame has got uh, wax on it. Some of these were pulled off of uh, um, other other hives that I've extracted. Some of them were just uh, frames that I haven't used or whatever off of a dead out or whatever. But uh, yeah, so every other frame is a foundation uh, and, and the rest are drawn out. So that'll give them a place to park feed and uh, hopefully they'll go ahead and fill out those uh, frames that are checkerboarded in there. I uh, hope everybody else is getting a pretty good uh, harvest as well. I still don't, I still haven't had much uh, success with the, uh, um, with the flow hive here. Of course, I've got this is probably full of honey down here, but uh, 
I can't really get bees to use those flow hives. This is like the second second or third year trying that thing. But uh, anyway, thanks for, uh, for watching if you stuck through all this rambling. And uh, leave a comment down below whether you think I should uh, do away with this hive stand or maybe just uh, kind of flip-flop. For some reason, I've got all my strong hives over here on the tall stand and all my splits and stuff I'm working on over on the short stand. Maybe I just need to flip that around, but it's kind of hard now that these, uh, these hives are established to go to moving them. And that's a whole nother, uh, can of worms that I've got there. So maybe I'll start a, another yard somewhere and just move all these, uh, uh, established hives out to, uh, to an out yard. And then I could kind of, uh, move things around here and, and make it make more sense. But, uh, thanks for watching guys.